Podcast. Uh, Daniel, thank you for taking the time to meet me. Um, we are both sleep deprived. Uh, you got three hours, no, I, I got was, two. I was, I was joking. Oh, you were joking? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, you make me feel better. That's very right? nice of you. No, uh, man, you know what? When you get younger, you end up being able to just spring right... Uh, when you're younger, you spring it right out of bed after like three hours of sleep. Yeah. I at least need seven to nine hours every night now. I'm a father, so um, yeah, he takes a lot of my time. But without that, yeah, at least seven to nine hours. So I went to bed kind of early. I was in bed by 12. Okay, so... Smart. I came down the road, though. So we went to... Um, uh, it's called Lou Lugans, Lugans, okay. something restaurant. It's like a yeah. it's like a, a brewery and a restaurant. Okay. Yeah. Um, and walking back, it was freezing. I mean, oh, yeah. I looked like I was an Eskimo. I was <laughs> coated up, had my hood over. There was these women that were half naked walking down the road like that was nothing. You know what I mean? Going to these. Uh, nightclubs or these parties so that's when I really felt my age when I was going home to watch TV and you had all these young fun parties going on and you okay. know well listen I, I, <laughs> I wanted to talk to you for sure because you're in your panel you were just frenetic energetic fun thank and you I want to know where the hell do you get your energy like what do you what do you what's your elixir of life that makes you like this I, no matter what you're just like wearing to go you know I think I was uh, dropped too many times as a child <laughs> No, uh, I don't know. I, you know, that's a that's a pretty good question. I I grew up with six uh, siblings, so I think at one point in life I ended up having to try and fit in yeah. and find my own place, and uh, end up becoming the loud, outgoing one. And it just really never went away. And um, thanks to Star Wars and the convention world, um, I was embraced so well that I just not only gave but shined my uh, my energy and, and who I am to the world of uh, sci-fi and yeah. conventions as well. And speaking, of, like, speaking of the convention world, like, that's how I know about you because I, I I knew about the character and the little kid and I knew all that, but I wasn't like super absorbed in that. Right. The reason I, the reason I really know who you are is uh, I saw Vic McDonough at, at Fan Expo like two years ago, and I, I, I just went I didn't know what it was. What is Star Trek Continues? And I went and watched Lolani. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and and, and then I, I'm like I'm like was blown away. I thought it was gonna be a jokey thing. I didn't know. I didn't understand it. And it was actually amazing. Yeah, it was and, fun. And, and I was like, holy shit, you know. And then and then we did we, me and uh, my colleague. We want let's do a podcast on this this episode. This is so <laughs> interesting. We did research. We spent like 15 hours gathering stuff and alert. That's how I learned the, about you. The Lou Frigno, uh, him being the I forgot what his name was. Uh, that was funny when yeah, I watch. Yeah. I'm like, I still see Lee, Lou Frigno because I've known him for so many years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But um, it was, <laughs> that moment where he pauses and he goes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that 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 that's my favorite scene. <laughs> I we, think we, 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 my friend both laughed out loud when we saw that. That's I, I thought he looked like. Um, Unintentionally funny. I, I love him, you know, but yeah. I th thought he looked like a um, an overgrown genie. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I like his M, yeah. <laughs> oh, but God, that funny. was a fun experience. Yeah. You know, uh, I got to go back to where it was kind of like an original set, original lighting. Had a couple of people that um, family members were around when the original uh, Star Treks were being aired. And uh, yeah. that's that's the fun part for where I got to, uh, to uh, sit in with it. I didn't have all green screen and blue screen. It felt like I was actually on an Enterprise yeah. back in the 70s with all these lights and... Mind-blowing. Mind-blowing. Yeah. You know, to think of what, how they could create such an amazing uh, uh, world almost yeah. through how little they had back in the day. You know, they literally had to build everything and then they had to light it or put lights behind it and blinking lights. Everything was so simple, but back then it was so cool and so much until George Lucas brought us the special effects world and then we were like oh we need lights action and, and blowing things up all the time there's something nice about the Star Trek's analog version of digital it, right it's, it's endearing um, I actually wanted to ask you this because I you know you go to a lot of conventions and it's a yeah. fun circuit but it must be a bit trippy and I wanted to I, I, people ask you fed questions day in and day out and you're probably like whatever but I want to know um, what's the because I actually, I, I heard this question asked of these guys from uh, the Vampire Diaries, and it, they got such an amazingly funny response, I wanted to ask you. All right. What's the weirdest, the most fun, trippy thing that's ever happened to you in a, at a convention? There must be some kind of like, oh my God, you know, I was jumped in an elevator, or I was da dangled off a roof, or some kind of weird um, that you're allowed to say, or that you feel comfortable with. I have the funniest fan thing. So, I was in Mexico, and I was, uh, it was a couple of years after the movie, and, 
the lines were huge, hours long, so I would sign all day almost. So it took me a while to be able to get to the bathroom, but you'd get to the point where you really needed to go where you'd have to break the line. Yeah. So I would I went off to the bathroom without the security, thinking, no, it's fine, I'm okay. And yeah. I was standing at the urinal going toilet, and uh, a guy comes up to me with an 8x10 and says, hey, Mr. Logan, in his broken <laughs> English, do you mind signing this autograph for me? Yeah. And uh, I remember being at the urinal at the time, being like, no, oh, no, go away, you know, like, go out, outside, outside. And I didn't speak any, any Spanish or whatever, you know. Uh, and okay. now I look back at it and think, man, like, I, I should have, you know, grabbed this thing. He could have held mine, helped us <laughs> both out, and we would have done the autograph the pee at the same time. You, you know, hey, you, well, you, you hold this, and I'll grab those, and we'll make it work. <laughs> oh <my laughs> Shake it to the left and the right of me when you're done. Um, I just want to ask you, like, uh, what's next on your you know, agenda for... You got anything coming up? Any appearances? Any little roles here or there? Anything you're I, hoping um, to do? I got a, uh, a film's coming out next year. Um, it's called The Underdogs Rising, okay. and it's about uh, a video game Dota 2. So um, I'm one of the players on on a team, and there's another team. It's like a, almost like a Mighty Ducks. Uh, oh, Mighty Ducks for professional gaming. Exactly. You know, there's always an that's underdog impressive. team. That's never been there's, done there's, before. Exactly. And, and there's a whole uh, world, especially over in Asia, that is, loves uh, the EA world, which is the uh, entertainment yeah. world, right? Who thought of this idea? Because they're a freaking genius. Uh, a, a, a company with uh, Funko, who's the Asia company, and also Valve, the, the video game company that creates video games and yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah. that. So, um, wow. It's going to be amazing. Uh, it was fun to work on it. So, I mean, a video game about a gamer. Gaming is fun. I mean, yeah. God, you're going to get to game. Yeah. Well, we didn't. Like we didn't to get. To, we didn't get to game. We yeah. had to pretend like we were gaming. Oh, that's yeah. Pathetic. <laughs> you gotta. Go, you gotta. Acting is. Um, Don't look be, behind the curtain. Yeah, yeah. being real in a, in a very in a fake situation. Well, uh, any other anything else? Uh, appearances? Wait, what do you think? You hope uh, to do? Just trying to flesh out. I'm going to Japan next, and wow. then. <clears throat> I think that's it. Place. Well, actually, you know what? I'm doing a, uh, another voiceover as, as well. Um, it's a Japanese anime. Okay. So it's it's huge in Japan, and now they're going to redub it over into English, and I play one of the characters. You know what's uh, the Can't really say much about it, oh, yeah, but yeah, it's going to be really good. It's, a, it's in the progress. you got to wait. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, the Funimation does a lot of these dubs. We, because we go to the convention circuit, we, we often see people like uh, Sean Chamel from Dragon Ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Love we, Sean. We know about anime mostly from voice actors who do the English dubs, because we're, we're English. We're in Canada, exactly. so we're not knowing them from the Japanese versions, but right, right, right. The, the voices, your voices are what we hear when we watch this anime now. So Most people don't even realize that some of these cartoons are already in Japanese before they even come to English, like yeah. Dragon Ball Z, Pokemon, um, there was a one called Digimon, like yeah. all these were all Japanese first before they even came into English, or a lot of them, you know, so, and then they were picked up so well that we ended up loving them as English, so. Well, I love Teletubbies right now with my son. It's the best thing on earth, you know, and that's English. <laughs> you know, the best thing to do with Teletubbies is to turn on the volume, get wasted, and then watch it, and then add your own dialogue. <laughs> no, I got, a I, I, got a, I got a son. I can't get wasted. <laughs> but uh, he loves it. I mean, I swear, it's the thing that attracts him the most. So we could put on anything on TV, and he'll just play with his little toys or try to crawl along the ground. And you share that, you share that with him, so it's really The special, Teletubbies. Right? Yeah, well, I got it from my little sister who's nine years younger than me. Yeah. And uh, she used to love it, but we used to fight for uh, her Teletubbies or my cartoon Dragon Ball Z. Yeah. That came on at the exact same time, but you only had one TV in your house. Oh, yeah. Those days, you know. Those now, days are over now. Now everyone has one in their phone, their house, everywhere you go. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Glasses, yeah. Sci-fi bona fides, you got them. Star Wars, Star Trek. That's Thank it. you. Yep. Drop the mic. Thank you for watching the Convention Junkies coverage of the 2018 London Comic Con. Please like, comment, and subscribe to see more. And let us know below what you think of this video. If you would like to help us with future projects, please visit our Patreon page.